Nine days, 135 orbits, 3.6 million miles compressed into about three minutes time. Um, some amazing pictures. Bob Cabana, just bring us up to date. Uh, what's happening right now? How soon might we see the crew? Uh, well, if we're fortunate, uh, they'll be egressing the vehicle here in about uh, 30 minutes, uh, 40 minutes from now. Uh, we should hopefully see them. All right, and let's talk a moment before we get away about your mission, which is coming up December 3rd. Not that uh, far off. And this is uh, the, the not unrelated in the sense that this is giving NASA an awful lot of momentum as you prepare for commanding the first construction mission of the International Space Station. How are things going on that front? Outstanding, Miles. We just finished uh, three days of tests and uh, technical briefings here at the uh, Kennedy Space Center uh, preparing for our December launch. Uh, we're really looking forward to a, a new era in space exploration here, uh, an era of international cooperation. We've got hardware uh, being built all over the world, uh, coming together on orbit. Uh, you know, it's, it's everybody's uh, responsibility to participate in the exploration of space, and I think doing it together, the space station is going to be a stepping stone to the, to the future. It's to going beyond Erskine's mines, uh, to the moon, back to the moon, on to Mars, and, and beyond. And I think it's, uh, it's not any one nation's responsibility, it's all our responsibilities, and we're all going to benefit from it. All right, Commander Bob Cabana getting ready for STS-88, due to launch December 3rd. Your boss was listening as you spoke. Daniel Golden is with us down near the shuttle. Uh, Daniel Golden, you going to give Bob Cabana a raise for what he just said? <laughs> can you hear us, Mr. Golden? Ah, uh, now I can hear you. All right, Mr. Golden, you, Bob Cabana was just talking about how this is really uh, a milestone moment for NASA as you look toward the space station, perhaps ultimately Mars. You agree? Without a doubt. Without a doubt, yes, I agree with him. What are your thoughts right now as you see that orbiter behind you and if you, as you've witnessed that uh, what appeared to be a flawless landing? That this NASA team is comprised of the greatest people in the world. I'm, I'm so proud of them. They do things flawlessly, and when they have problems, they deal with it. That drag shoot had some questions about it. They work simulations. They work contingencies. They brought the crew back safe, and that's what the space program's about. Mr. Golden, uh, all throughout this mission, John Glenn and yourself have, have stressed the fact that this is all about science, but clearly there was a public relations component about this. Uh, NASA must be pleased at the amount of attention, and perhaps I, I might suggest a little bit surprised at the amount of attention it's got. I am stunned by the amount of attention. When I agreed to send Senator Glenn into space, I didn't have any idea that this would be the outpouring from the nation. But you know what? Inspiration for our children and our seniors is not bad. Inspiration for adults to feel good about themselves, to feel good about America, it's not bad. And having children have a hero. I'm not against sports. I'm not against uh, rock stars. But having a real good, clean national hero to look up to, to talk to them about the importance of math and science, I stand guilty as charged. It was uh, a bit of a risky mission when you consider the stakes. Uh, after all, President Kennedy, 36 years ago, made the decision that he was a national hero too uh, valuable to risk on a space flight mission. Did you have a lot of sleepless nights throughout these last months? Once the decision was made, I have such confidence in this team. No, no sleepless nights. But you know what? NASA is about taking risk. And when we announced John going back into space, we said he knew there's a finite possibility he won't come back. And he knows that the rewards outweigh the risk. At NASA, we represent the best in America, and we're willing to deal with that risk, and we don't have to make a special person and isolate them. We want to open the space frontier so everyone in America could benefit, and we know that there's a risk, but it's okay. We're Americans, and we do it. What are you going to say to payload specialist number two when you see him? I'm going to get, I don't know if Annie's not there. I'm going to give him a hug. Maybe if Annie's there, I'll push her out of the way and try and hug him, too. I'm going to say, you did what you said you'd do. You stuck to your guns, and you're a man of integrity. I love you. NASA Administrator Daniel Golden joining us from very near the shuttle landing facility and the space shuttle. He will soon be seeing John Glenn. Thanks for being with us. Oh, it's my honor. My honor, Miles. Turn now to Walter. Walter, um, NASA couldn't have hoped for a better 
stint than this. Nine no. days, except for that drag chute door, which turned out to be a non-problem. No. They had a good run, didn't they? Absolutely, a, a perfect run. Uh, and, and, and that's a great credit to everybody. It also presents some problems. The, uh, uh, in the first place, we're about to find out in the next few months whether we learned anything, uh, really, uh, uh, in this flight that uh, Glenn hoped to establish regarding the relationship between the effect of weightlessness uh, on the average individual and an elderly individual and how those lessons might apply on Earth. Uh, they're very important to all of us if it turns out that anything was learned at all. We won't know that for months until this, uh, all the data is in and all the examinations have been made. And the, thus this, this perfect flight with Glenn actually has presented NASA with a terrible problem. It got an extraordinary amount of publicity out of this flight with Glenn aboard. Uh, it renewed public interest, as uh, Golden was just saying a moment ago, in space flight and in NASA's mission uh, and our dedication to it. But at the same time, the very nature of the flight, the perfect flight, again, established what the public has accepted now for several years, which is that, we, that, that space flight is now the normal. Uh, not something extraordinary in which we should be devoting our public attention. It's going on out there and it's doing well. Uh, the, the space flight today as we saw this landing, uh, we're launching these craft, we're landing them here. We've had 92 now missions uh, in, in space with the shuttle, 92 for heaven's sakes. Most of them got went by with hardly any public attention. This one got this extraordinary amount because of Glenn's persistence in demanding to go to try to prove this elderly theory of his. And now, however, we return to the routine. Bob, man is going to go up there and here in, uh, within a month uh, on a terribly important mission putting those pieces, beginning to put those pieces together of that International Space Station. As he says, the next great move to our exploration of space, which we have to be dedicated to, manned exploration of space, as well as robotic exploration of space and deep space. But still, it is being done so well that it's very hard to excite public interest in a construction project, even when it's 350 miles out there somewhere. All right, Bob and Cabana may differ with you on that, but Walter <laughs> Cronkite, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. With that, uh, we will close out and just let you know that the ground crew there at the shuttle landing facility has pronounced the area around the orbiter safe. The crews should be getting ready to disembark very shortly. We should be seeing them around 1 p.m. Eastern time. We will, of course, bring that to you uh, live when it happens. There will be a news conference by the flight controllers shortly thereafter. That also on our live schedule for you today. And then sometime this evening, a crew news conference. We expect to see Commander Kurt Brown for sure, and then other members of the crew. I would be very surprised if we didn't see John Glenn at that particular event. Once again, live coverage of that. So stay with CNN throughout the day as we continue our coverage of John Glenn's return to space. And just a reminder, uh, all our coverage uh, throughout these past uh, nine days has been dedicated to our uh, friend and departed colleague, John Holloman, who should have been sitting in this chair, and unfortunately, uh, tragedy struck, and he wasn't, and uh, our best to his family at this moment, and uh, wherever he is, I'm sure he's enjoying spectacular pictures. A great man, song. much beloved by everybody at CNN, yeah, CNN. everybody who knew him in the space program, and that example was they carried a picture to space for his children, his child, uh, Jay, and... Uh, and uh, we're missing a message.